Actually, no, there's something I want you to do while I give the intro. Okay, yeah, what's that? Do you know the song, I Am The Doctor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want you to hum that underneath me talking the intro. Hello, everyone. And welcome to the Banther Fodder Christmas Doctor Who special. We are watching, <laughs> we're watching the Christmas Carol. My favourite episode. Okay, yeah, let's start. <laughs> we're watching the Christmas Carol. This is my favourite episode. Bob has seen part of it as he walked past the TV as a child and glanced at it and then walked off. That's what you told me earlier. Yeah, literally. Is that right? Yeah, I remember Dumbledore is in it. That is literally it, really. I, I don't really have any other knowledge, which is kind of rare so far because I seem to have seen everything that we've reacted to or talked about. You'll actually see me reacting for once. <laughs> I would say that this is the most Christmassy Christmas special out of all Doctor Who. Because all the David Tennant ones, great as they may be, are still very much a Doctor Who story that happens at Christmas, whereas this is a Christmas Doctor Who story. Yeah, it's basically the normal shebang, but you have Christmas trees and utensil yeah. and baubles flying around, you know, so I guess most of them are just a Christmas-themed Doctor Who adventure, you know. Yeah. Let's head over to the, uh, the Bantha Fodder small screen. <laughs> Let's go. It's not me. Literally just season five happens and we're flung into a spaceship and Amy Pond. It's Nebula. It's Nebula. And it's Rory. Oh, there's the TARDIS. <laughs> it's Christmas. Yeah. Merry Christmas. It's Christmas. I actually prefer this title sequence to David Tennant's. It reminds you a lot more of the some of the classic Who uh, opening titles. The Chris Eccleston one and the David Tennant ones did kind of just go completely the other way, whereas this feels a lot more kind of classic who we're on an alien planet there's a ship that's just crashed yeah. there's a barrier that the doctor needs to get taken down so the ship can land and it's always good to know that alien planets have christianity <laughs> transcends the universe it just gives me a warm fuzzy christmas feeling this whole episode i'm just gonna go out on a whim and say that this does have something to do with his namesake oh yeah <laughs> i'm assuming this guy is meant to be like scrooge like ebenezer scrooge basically yeah uh -huh, exactly all of the matt smith specials are based around fairy tales people on this planet they take out loans and then i think they give up a person that goes into this thingy that stores them. So they're trying to get her out to spend Christmas with her, and he's saying, nah, you still owe money. That's kind of similar to Ebenezer Scrooge in A Christmas Carol. I think he had a similar career. The poor was very downtrodden from him because he wouldn't give people days off for Christmas and he wouldn't give to charity or anything like that, so. Well, all the crash, sir. Oh. Well, that's a kind of landing, isn't it? It's kind of landing. <laughs> you call that a landing? <laughs> Yes! yes! The best doctor! <laughs> Me and Father Christmas, Frank Sinatra's hunting lodge, 1952. <laughs> See him at the back with a blonde, Albert Einstein, the three of us together. Oh, watch out. God, can you imagine how hectic of a night that would have been? The Doctor, Frank Sinatra, and Santa Claus. <laughs> Do you know, in 900 years of time and space, I've never met anyone who wasn't important before. <sighs> and that's one of the reasons he's my favourite character of all time. Well, then you haven't met me. <laughs> Isomorphic. There's no such thing. These controls are isomorphic. <laughs> trapped in your cloud belt. Without your help, they're going to die. Yes. Pretty sure that was ADR then, because it didn't match his speech properly. Yeah. <laughs> Give me your predictions. How's the Doctor going to fix this one? I reckon he's going to guilt trip him. He's going to make ghosts appear. They're all going to be like, hey, do the good thing. And then he's going to up and be like, you know what, maybe I should. I mean, that, that's sort of like a loose prediction that I have. I mean, if it's following the Christmas Carol, like the story, then that's probably what's going to happen. I'm sure it's probably going to sub subvert my expectations in one way or another. You yeah, know? yeah, we'll see how that plays out for you. There's a portrait on the wall behind me. It looks like you, but it's too old, so it's your father. All the chairs are angled away from it. That has been definitely. Oh my god, he's having a Sherlock moment. <laughs> <laughs> was this the same time as I know Moffat was writing them at the same time, but I don't know if this came out before or after Sherlock season one. I think this is right about the same time. This is what, 2010? Yeah. So Sherlock was like the same year, so yeah, it would have been around the same time. Is this meant is this meant to be Bob Cratchit? I've never seen a Christmas carol, so I have not? no idea. Have not? None of none <laughs> no. of the interpretations. <laughs> never seen zero. Never seen a never seen a single version of the Christmas Carol apart from this episode. Oh my god. Look! The fish! <laughs> Wait, what? The fish on this planet swim in the fog, not in the water. What, they're, they're <laughs> 
So the so they have gills for fog. Yeah, what okay. can be in the clouds if there can be fish in the fog? Oh, don't tell me it's sharks. We don't need another shark, NATO. We don't have to be afraid of the fish. They're not really interested. You don't listen to people. You listen to me. <gasps> That's why he didn't hit the child, because his father beat him senseless. Moffat really utilizes the time travel element as well of Doctor Who, which is less utilized in the same way in Tenant Zero. Who are you? Tonight, I'm a ghost of Christmas. Party. Oh, here we go. That's actually quite a cool shot, actually, of his that projection on the door. It gets even fucking cooler. You ready? Oh, no. Oh, no. No, it's. Oh, no. Fuck. <laughs> no way. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> it's so that's, good. that's really cool. That's so cool. I like, I, I like that. Now, your past is going to change. That means your memories will change too. Bit scary, but you'll get the hang of it. Just a lot of wavy lines. Yeah, it's shorted out. Finally, a lie too big. <laughs> I've, I've never caught that joke. Yeah, oh, that's interesting. The, the psychic paper could not work if you bullshit too much. I think that outfit's my favourite Doctor Who outfit. It's the perfect mix between modern Doctor and classic old man Doctor. Definitely. It's sort of like a combination between John Pertwee and... Much like a modern spin on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go with that, yeah, because it doesn't really have any sort of attributes of Christopher Eccleston's or David Tennant's at this point. Christopher Eccleston's my least favourite Doctor Who outfit. Well, my favourite is probably David Tennant, just because he wears Converse and a long coat. So, and that's so like, <laughs> yeah. I don't think there's any true explaining how the fuck this fish thing works. <laughs> like, for one, if the fish are floating, why aren't all humans floating? You could say they have denser gravity, but then, like, what about big fish? Oh, God. There's always a bigger fish. I have my screwdriver. I could probably send a pulse and stun it. Well, where's your screwdriver? Well, concentrating on the pluses. <laughs> I just love the way that Matt Smith's doctor, like, no matter how life-threatening it is, he can't help but enjoy it. Yeah, like he gets a kick off the adrenaline, basically. See, it's funny because Ebenezer Scrooge always relished in, like, decreasing the service population. But here he seems obsessed with increasing the service popula population, so... 7258! Just what I was after. Another timey wimey bit, you went back to get the code. Guess who it is? Who is that? That's the lady from the start. Oh yeah. Is his name Mr. Sardic? It kind of sounds like Sardine. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> the other thing with his character, he only ever carried on his dad's business. He never actually, he wasn't the one to create it. Yeah, it wasn't like Scrooge and Marley. But I keep saying this with, a, with, now, with the knowledge now that you've never seen a Christmas Carol, so like... <laughs> Every time you say a reference, I'm just like, yeah. Yeah, I kind of sounds Scrooge and Marley. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I am the Doctor that that theme should stay forever because it's just the best theme ever. Is it still in Doctor Who? Not really. It sort of went out with Capaldi. Capaldi had a variation of it and then it sort of went out. It should just be the Doctor's theme from now until forever. Oh my god, Harry Potter brought his dragon egg under the water. <laughs> I also think that Matt Smith and Peter Capaldi's era, from a filmmaking perspective, looks better than Jodie Whittaker's era, which is crazy given it's 10 years older than it. I think this era of the show is the best it has ever looked. Yeah, I mean, it, it does look pretty stunning, to be fair. It's like the combination of full HD cameras, which they didn't have during Tenant, and really talented directorial talent. Yeah, but it just goes to show, doesn't it? Like, it's, it's just as much about the people behind the camera than the cameras that they're using, you know? <laughs> they, yeah, exactly. Because, like, Jodie Whittaker's era does have far better equipment. It just doesn't look as good. The composition here is just so much better. Now she's on his wall. Why would she be on his wall? Are you an angel? <laughs> oh, I love this TARDIS design. Look at it. For a second, I was expecting, like, Christmas decorations in there for some reason. I was trying to look out for them, but I was like, oh, no, it's just the same. But no, it's yeah. really good, though. It's, really <laughs> it's not the best, best one, but it is up there with the best. Now, we all know that the best one is when the third Doctor just had, like, the TARDIS console in the warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that is the best one. Yeah. Oh, you ready for the reveal? 007. Ba -da, ba -da, ba -da. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> that was meant to be really dramatic and like, oh no, she's dying. Yeah. <laughs> it was just, James yeah. Bond! <laughs> he stopped the bomb just in time. <laughs> you ruined the moment, Bob. That was meant to be dramatic. Every Christmas Eve, she's one day closer to death. Okay. I love the complexity of 
we're watching a story take place over eight years, but also in one evening. Yeah. That's the thing you can only do in Doctor Who. Mm. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. I'm going to make a D&D world with fish in the sky, and then you won't be laughing when they rip your face <laughs> off. <laughs> you're, you're right, I won't. I'll be crying. Exactly. You'll probably start us off at a very low level. None of us have Revivify. Exactly. We can't just spam it like exactly. we have been doing recently. Yes. <laughs> oh, he's getting older. Mm. She's like, damn, you got Oh my goodness. My goodness, you've grown. <laughs> So have you grown more beautiful than me? Oh god! <laughs> I just I clocked slightly too late what you were saying. And yeah. then realized, and then you realized it was too late. Yeah, it too already happened. To, it was too late to stop you. When girls are crying, are you supposed to talk to them? I have absolutely no idea. Mm. <laughs> me neither, to be honest. You just give them a hug. Tomorrow's Christmas dinner is cancelled as my sister refuses to attend. Is it okay, instead? Ma? We'll have it tonight. Yay! <laughs> Isn't this just the most Christmassy Christmas Eve yeah, episode ever? Yeah, it's ever? so Christmassy. I feel like this episode works because Matt Smith is in this. This would work way less if any other doctor was trying to tell this story. Oh, the holding hands! Guys. We've really got to go quite quickly. I just accidentally got engaged to marry my brother. <laughs> As you do. <laughs> Fine, thank you. I'll just go and get married then, shall I? See how you like that. Yeah, that'll show him. <laughs> that'll show him. <laughs> he's just so good. Mm. Oh, he's brilliant, yeah. Well, Christmas is for kids. Isn't it? No, no. it's not. What a load of old oh, shit, God, eh? Work. Yeah. Dad, Christmas is for everyone. Yes. What's happened? What are you not telling me? Fucking men. Just say your feelings. Because she only has one day left. Fuck. It's really emotional, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> Will he do the right thing? Uh. Will he? Do it. Do it. <laughs> His little face. <gasps> Turn his back on the doctor. Oh, we actually didn't. <laughs> it was the I am the doctor theme that threw me. Yeah, exactly. Very cleverly used. Oh, there you go. So Amy Pond is the ghost of Christmas present. Right, gotcha. I would never have known her if the doctor hadn't changed the course of my whole life to suit himself. A little bit fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, such a clever way of him becoming the same person again as yeah, well. Yeah, no, definitely. Better a broken heart than no heart at all. I would try it. You try it. <laughs> you don't say that to him, Jesus. Do you know why I'm going to let those people die? Not a plan. I don't get anything from it. It's just that I don't care. I'm not like you. I don't even want to be like you. I don't and never, ever will care. So what do you think? Is this who you want to become? <gasps> no! <laughs> No! It's so it's so good. That blew my fucking mind the first time I saw it. It's actually quite a good story for like family trauma almost. He's like healing the inner child in a physically presented way. Yeah, in a very literal way as well. Like it could be taken literally or figuratively. This you can use this. I kept it. See? What? Half a screwdriver. Uh. Da, 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 da. I will never ever get tired of dramatic pause. I am the doctor. Yeah, place. yeah. <laughs> We need her to sing. No. So much better on a second watching as well, because everything makes so much mm. sense. Like everything they set up and pay Yeah, because there's certain things you don't really, you don't really think is important, but then it comes up like, oh yeah. I think it's time for Christmas Day. Why is this episode so emotional? <laughs> it's definitely probably the most emotional one I've watched. Because the Tenant ones never really, didn't really, never really got that emotional. Like, I'm sorry, I, I didn't really give a fuck when Kai Minogue died in, in The Voyage of the Damned, you know. The clouds will unlock. What does that mean, unlock? What happens when a cloud unlocks? Something that hasn't happened in this town for a very long time now. What do you think it'll be, given it's Christmas? Snow. snow! And hopefully it's actually snow, not just ash from a Sycorax ship. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. That's actually so dark when you think about yeah. it. Spoilers for the next one. Moffat loves doing this as well, where it's something like really whimsical that is the conclusion. 
Right, come on then, let's go. Uh, got any more? The reason these three work so well is they're actually best friends in real life to this day. Are they actually? No way. Yeah, yeah, like it was Matt Smith's birthday the other day and it was these three that went out and chilled. Oh, cool. Where are they? Casual and Abigail. Off on a little trip, I should think. Where? Christmas. <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yay. Yeah. And that was Doctor Who, A Christmas Carol. What did you think of it, Bobbert? I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. My prediction is the beginning of the episode's kind of played out. Not in the way that I was expecting it to. I was expecting them to incorporate like the ghost mimic to some degree, but it wasn't just complete retelling of A Christmas Carol. There were so many different elements that kind of introduced in that original story. A big reason to why Scrooge is such an ass because the love of his life left him. Sardonic? Is that his name? Call him Mr. Sardine because that's all I can think about now when his name came up. That's like the only way I can like even vaguely remember. But yeah, no, obviously that does play into how Mr. Sardik is in the present. Obviously with the extra layer of her being on a clock and her actually dying if he spends too much time with her, which there is actual tragic consequences and underlies uh, all of his ways of acting and ways of presenting himself. I thought a lot of it was very effective. I mean, something I've noticed, not only in this episode, but in a lot of the other ones in the Moffat era, in this episode, there is no Doctor Who villain, per se. There's no, like, Doctor Who monster. The monster in this is an abusive parent. Yeah, pretty yeah. much, yeah. Obviously, it does work very well as a theme, but obviously, in terms of Doctor Who, you don't really get that too often, where they're just going, right, we're just going to do away with the monsters. We're just going to tell this story, which I think has someone who's a bit older than I was when I was watching Doctor Who when it first came out. That Those sorts of stories work really well for me. You can just spend the time with the characters without worrying about when the monster's going to come in and what the body count's going to be by the end of it, which it's just nice. It's just nice. It is like an incredibly Christmassy story, which isn't in the confines of just being a continuation of the series. It has to take place during Christmas. Those are my overall thoughts on the episode as a whole. I love absolutely everything about about this episode. I love that it's incredible. It's like an onion. There's just so many layers to it when you like dig into it. His trauma coming from his father and the way that that's revealed is really well done. The initial bit where the doctor goes back in time. Yeah. Oh, that was so smooth. So smooth. He's showing yeah. him the video and it's like, right, I'm going to show you. And he's like, what do you mean? And then he just appears in the video. It's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. No, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Tried to make him good, but accidentally made him bad. But he went bad because the guilt of he was the one who accidentally killed the person he was in love with. That so much more effective than what you said the original was where his wife just left him because he was a dick really humanizes the uh, villain and you're completely on his side by the end you, you can understand his heartbreak you can understand his plight the initial line at the beginning when the doctor says i've never met anyone who wasn't important that then plays somatically throughout the whole thing when he says that he doesn't know who she's going to become but it also means the people on the ship who the guy doesn't think are important doctor thinks they're important enough to prevent them dying despite the fact if you look at the grand scheme of the world of everything it's basically a car crash one car crash is enough for the doctor to be like, nah, I'm gonna I'm gonna sort this out. Last thing I want to touch on before we finish is just how good is Matt Smith in this? Matt Smith is just amazing. Every scene he's in is just he grabs you and pulls you into the screen with his performance, and you just don't want to do anything else except watch him. He's just so good at what he does, and the characterization of his version of the doctor is so strong. If people say to me, Why is he your favorite doctor? This would be one of the episodes I would present. That's the other thing with Matt Smith, isn't it? Like, I think just as an actor, he's got such a magnetic present. Even in House of the Dragon now he's playing a bad guy who like strangles his wife and you're still just like fucking hell he's so likeable though. <laughs> Same in Last Night in Soho which came out last year, the latest Edgar Wright movie. Uh, he was in that and he played uh, a villainous role as well. Again, you just can't take your eyes off him really can you? Like You just watch him you just go fuck you're the most charming, handsome, charismatic person I've ever seen in my life. But yeah, I'm gonna stop. Maybe I should uh, say something slightly different. I'm gonna stop I, I think I think pining I think pining would be a appropriate term because it's, it's Christmas time. Okay, I'm, I won't stop pining over Matt Smith because we're watching um, six of these. Do a ranking as we go. So naturally, this is going to be number one now because we haven't watched any others yet. Your numeric ranking. So out of ten, I'm going to give this eight point eight. This is I'm going to look like such a Doctor Who mark because I'm going to give it 
10 out of 10 because I can't find fault with it that would knock it down. Oh my god. Literally, the only two 10, 10s out of 10s you've given have been for Doctor Who episodes, which, yeah, I mean, fair enough, but yeah. Because we've only watched two of my top five favourite episodes. That was Christmas Carol. We're going to be watching The Christmas Invasion next week, so subscribe for that. We were banned for fodder. That was A Christmas Carol. Bye-bye.